and then the last section of this uh, of this unit is on the smart grid, uh, which comes from a, a selection of slides taken from a course at Illinois. Uh, th this course is much bigger than I give you the full link here. I just have a few slides to illustrate some of the key ideas. So um, here, here the uh, professors in charge of this course. It was a 2010 course, but at the level I'm discussing it, I think the points made are correct. Um, so it notes that the US electricity grid is aged, centralized, very fragile, and it needs to be upgraded with distributed sensors, sensors and centralized cloud computing. Um, and an example was, uh, there was a very famous blackout uh, in 2003 in the, no in the Northeast, which was due to the failure of the grid. That uh, one failure was cascaded into other parts of the grid, and then the whole thing collapsed. And uh, that affected uh, 55 million people and lost 6 billion, cost 6 billion, and in general, every year 135 billion is lost due to power, power outages. And of course, the US is well known to have aging infrastructure. It's not just its uh, electrical grid, its roads, its bridges. Its buildings are all aging because it actually expanded earlier than many of the emerging countries. So uh, you will get prettier, uh, more modern um, infrastructure in other parts of the world. But uh, the US has made a choice and it's um, got aged infrastructure. So trying to improve that infrastructure without rebuilding it all from scratch is pretty important. So. Smart grids are very straightforward. You take all the collection of items on the grid, all the all the different uh, the transformers and transmission lines and and meters and things like that, and you just internet enable all of them and send that data to the cloud, and you use that to, for the consumers to use their energy more efficiently, for the power producers to know when they have a problem. And to also do selective power offs to, in an efficient fashion when they're on those days when more power is needed than is actually available. And they do not then have to switch on inefficient uh, sources of additional power, and it's quite as much. So this uh, points out some of these features. It says it's all here's the grid across the country. Uh, we, we obviously have to worry about security because if we weren't secure, this IT infrastructure would be used to destroy the grid. We need to make it so that everything is distributed and self healing. So this is a classic autonomous, autonomous um, processing problem because, and the IT information is intrinsically reliable. You have multiple sensors, so if one goes down, you can effectively interpolate to find the values of from other sensors, and all of this is controlled dynamically. Hopefully, it's cost effective. And because it's all software and it's all done by software, it's sort of intrinsically flexible if you write the software correctly. Here's the type of devices you have. Uh, it's an advanced metering infrastructure. It allows real-time electrical pricing, accurate load characterization, and outage detections. And so this is a smart meter, which was in California, asked the utilities, for example, to deploy. Um, here's the uh, some more technical device, a health monitor, uh, phaser measurement unit, which measures the electrical uh, health of the system and detects faults early, isolates some um, faulty systems, and prevents unnecessary power outages. This is the type of thing that would have prevented that Northeast power outage. Not the original power outage, but just the cascade effect. Here's an example of weather. We know, of course, a lot of the problems with power come from bad weather. And uh, you not only want to predict bad weather, you also want to know when your solar energy will be, and wind energy will be, be, be effective. And, uh, this is the f sort of final vision that we want to um, have, um, 
uh, self-sufficient energy with wind and natural gas, renewable energy, and uh, all of this can be integrated together with this type of infrastructure. So this allows a more richer set of electrical power producers to be supported. So these are all, these are relatively um, clear reasons to do the, the um, smart grid. And clearly the electrical utilities are looking very carefully at it. I don't think they're using clouds at the moment, but they ought to be using clouds. So that's the end of this unit. And uh, as we say, there are 24 billion sensors in the Internet of Things by 2020. They all ought to be linked up to the cloud. And that will provide them, that will, the cloud will give them enormous performance. And the 24 billion devices will give a lot of use in the, for that, those clouds. Thank you very much. That is the end of this unit.